is Jimmy Cabbage Tape, the broadcast of 5150 Interview Series and Bulldozer Magazine here on a lovely Saturday cold night at the airliner with the very lovely, gorgeous, and macabre, the queen. Let me say that again. The queen, the true queen of horror punk and the innovative force behind what is known now as goth and death rock. Dinah Cancer. How are you doing, Dinah? Well, a very good evening to all you out there. I hope you're having a great evening. We're kind of like snuggling up and all calm in our beds, waiting to go out and rock the roof off of this place down here at the airliner in Los Angeles on this cold November evening. But you like this kind of weather because it's cold, it's chilly, it's dark, it's gloomy, it's macabre, it's dark, it's vampirish. It's one of my most happiest seasons is when it starts to cool off and you can dress in layers and have a great time doing it. 45 Grave from Los Angeles for over three decades is a band that not only was very innovative and what is now known as the goth death rock scene, which now there's a lot of money in that. Has Marilyn Manson wrote you a check? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> well, he should. But, no, actually, you no. Know, in the past, we had our pleasure of playing with, like, Rob Zombie. Has he wrote you a check? No, but he, he invited us to open for him because we are his favorite band. So I was very honored, and it's been very nice to have all these bands come back and go, hey, we love you, we like what you do, and you know what? I'm gonna keep doing it. But why is it that Lena Lovitch gets so much credit? Why is it that Nina Hagen gets so much credit? Why is it that Diamanda Galas gets so much credit? But you are the innovative force behind this whole, what is now known now as horror punk, but you were the first creative musician person to really open up the beauty of darkness and shape it to where it's at today. You know what, it's hard. I have to come to terms with it as you never make money being an innovator. And you know what, I'm very blessed that I gave birth to so many different like genres as everyone has tagged me in. Um, we have noble mention in the Grammy Museum for being the innovators of goth, industrial, punk, horror, whatever you want to call it. But you know what? Being an innovator means you are a scene maker. And you know what? You never really get it that much credit. And you know what? I will be playing till my last breath comes out of this here body, and I will be haunting you. What was it in the beginning? Because Let's go back to that period. I mean, okay. under Reaganomics, under the whole conservative uh, uh, era of that time, what was it that inspired you to create this ahead of its time, by the way? I'll say it on the record, ahead of its time. This whole mixture of rebellious, 50s-inspired horror, macabre beauty, and then gel it with, at the time, that very new edge punk rock at that time? Well, you have to remember, if you know any of the Break by Grey lore, um, Paul Cutler, who was in a band called The Consumers, you had Rob Ritter, or Rob Graves, our bass player, who was in The Bags, Felonious Monster, Gun Club, you had Don Bowles, drummer extraordinaire of The Germs, and various other projects, and we came from this big melting pot I've always been myself a girl who always liked to look dead, so it just <laughs> came hand in hand, and my choice in writing lyrics have always been a little bit on the macabre side, so you know what, it, it's what I do best, so I just keep doing it. Being at that time, though, it was such an innovative creative force, bands like the Circle Jerks, Black Flag, and then 45 Grave all played together in the circuit at that time, mm -hmm. before money. But you always stood apart. You stood apart creatively, and also you stood apart with the fact that you were doing something that no one else was doing. Yeah, well, you know what? Back then, 
you don't really think that you are doing something that special. It wasn't until like way later when I started my next project, which is called Penis Blight Trap, when I we went when we went into the the gore aspect and the theatrics of producing live horror movies on stage that you don't realize what impact. But back then it's just a giant melting pot of all these different I mean it was just one big scene. No one was cliquish. We went to each other's shows. And you know what? It was like one of the greatest adventures of my life. It was like there was just so much going on at that point. And a lot of the things that we did back then, like in 78, 79, the girls started taking on like a Theta Bera, if you're familiar with old silent movies, where we wanted to look dead. Paisley White, and it was basically our way of saying, like, we're dead already. You know, what the hell? You know, so we just kind of continued in that kind of like genre, kind of like going in and out. So, you know, here we are you know, 38 years later and we're still doing it. It's incredible, over three decades. How do you feel now, present day, that there's this whole new generation that's rediscovering not only artists like yourselves, mm -hmm. but in 2015, it's really hard to shock anybody anymore. Everyone's pretty much synthesized. I mean, society as a whole is somewhat disconnected, but yet they still appreciate what you're doing now. How does that make you feel? Actually, it makes me feel quite pleased. I mean, I'm not like as theatrical as I was uh, like back in the day. I mean, hell, I was like 18 at the time, but... Um, you still look 18, girl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, but you just kind of like, you, you just have to kind of like, um, you just have to kind of like, wait, I am waiting for a new band to really, really drive it home. And I'm still waiting. I know it's out there. It's going to research. It's just like it just hasn't quite connected yet. I don't know. Hopefully we'll get to see something in the next couple of years. I would love to see it. And, you know, as far as me, I'm going to continue to pursue what I do and make the music because I am doing it for me because I love to entertain myself. If you guys get off on it, more power to you and come and join me for the ride. Is that the inspiration, especially now? Is that what really gets you still, gives you the fire to produce, to do what you're doing, is the fact that you still enjoy it? I, it's not an easy thing to no, do. No, you know, because people, people think it's easy, it's not. No, actually, it's like, you know, it's like if you're starting a new band, be prepared to suffer, to bleed, to go hungry. You'll love to learn to eat top ramen the want, and you'll just basically like put every so every last drop of energy and tears and everything to put into this package and produce yourself as like a band. It's like it charges me because it's like you know what. People said that when I had turned 50, that nah, no one's going to like you anymore and stuff like, well, I basically said, no way, let me out. We just got through recording a, a Christmas song, then it's Snow Miser on Cleopatra. Nice. We have shows and everything coming up for next year. It's like, here's your imagination. You can either have it this small or you can let it expand. The world is your universe. You dictate to the universe and you fight. Because if you don't fight for it, you're going to roll out to the wayside. So keep that driving force, man. One of the things that I've always respected about you is the fact that, as I mentioned before, creatively what you have created and been innovative. But being as a female, you were also at the forefront. Like, Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure in the late 70s there were some female front oh persons like from the Avengers. And well, like one of my favorite, all-time favorite front women was Wendy O. Williams of the Plasmatics. Oh, I mean, I mean, oh my, every time I would see any of her videos or any footage of the Plasmatics, it was just awesome. Another strong female I love is Joan Jett, the woman 
has done great things for rock and roll and everything else in between. And you know what? There's a lot of great women in the metal scenes and the punk scenes and whatever scenes you want. And you know what? They're working their butts off to entertain you. So I can see potential for a lot of new female-fronted bands to be making like their 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 selves known. They're undiscovered yet, but keep your eyes open. They just fight, have to fight a little bit harder than anyone else.